Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. It's Martin Luther King Day. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. We'll take you inside the events and celebrations honoring the legend across Metro Detroit. And I'm Nick Monticelli live in Harrison Township where a man fell through the ice here. What firefighters had to go through, including falling through the ice themselves to rescue him. And speaking of ice, we have freezing rain advisories up across the metro area. Paul Gross and for Brandon is tracking trouble we'll encounter on the roads all across the metro area this afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us this noon. We do begin, though, with breaking news out of Sterling Heights, where two people are dead after a fatal car crash. The crash happened at the intersection of 17 Mile and Ryan. That intersection is now closed in all direction while police investigate. The other big story this noon is the weather. Right now, we don't know if the weather is related to that crash, but we do know that slick conditions are headed our way. Let's get to Paul Cross with the very latest on the impacts this afternoon and for the evening drive. Yeah, and we had a change this morning. This freezing rain advisory was not supposed to go into effect until 5 o'clock this afternoon, but it's in effect now. That's been moved up, and that's because we have patches of freezing drizzle, freezing rain, sleet, and even some snow in the area. The winter weather advisory for Sanilac County and parts north, that has not changed. That goes into effect at 7 o'clock. Temperatures are really important because if you're looking out your window right now and it's raining and if your number is at or below 32 degrees, then that means you're getting freezing rain right now or freezing drizzle. So it's above freezing in Grosseal and Metro Airport. Same thing in Monroe, Toledo, but most of the other locations are at or below freezing right now. And that obviously would include to the north where it's typically cooler. 30 in Macomb Township, still only 26 in Emmett and Sandusky. So you get a get an idea that it is plenty cold out there. So here, boy, this radar looks like a great Picasso painting right now. There's just everything on here. We're seeing snow, sleet, freezing rain. And what's going to happen is it's going to be spotty and patchy and light at first this afternoon, then increasing later this afternoon and temperatures not going anywhere. I'll be back with more on when this is going to end in just a little bit, Rhonda. All right, Paul, thank you. In the meantime, our other big story this noon is a rough morning on Lake St. Clair after an ice fisherman fell through the thin ice and had to be rescued by firefighters who also fell through the thin ice trying to save him. Nick Monticelli joins us now live in Harrison Township. And Nick, talk us through exactly what happened here and probably the warning that they have to anybody else that wants to try ice fishing right now. Ron, that's exactly a good afternoon. In fact, the freezing rain that Paul is talking about is kind of indicative of the problem. The temperatures have been all over the map the past couple of weeks, and that is one of the reasons that the ice here is thin in some areas and thick in the others. But the warning and the message is just that it can change, especially depending on where you're at in the ice. We're at a boat launch near Jefferson and Crocker, and an ice fisherman went too far towards a spillway, and then he fell through. Somebody must have fallen through. From her bedroom window, Julie Gerstner was watching, hoping that whatever was going on, whoever was hurt, was being saved. We couldn't tell what was going on, but our immediate thought was someone had fallen in the ice. That is exactly what happened. At 7.15 this morning, an ice fisherman on Lake St. Clair got too close to a spillway where there's still a decent current, meaning the ice isn't as thick. Harrison Township firefighters came, but on their way out, they too fell through the ice. 100 yards away from the man they were trying to rescue. And then they uh, swam to him and put him on the ice sled, um, and that's how they got him out uh, through the rope, through the other two guys, other crews. The 45-year-old man was hypothermic, but as you can see in this video, they were able to rescue him. He is now in stable condition. His misfortune is a reminder of caution to others coming here, something Detroit firefighter Jeff Schlomer says often you got to be cautious of where you're going and just look at the, watch the ice if you see you can see it now that there's no snow and uh, just be cautious when you live here you're every morning we wake up to um, people out on the ice and we question ourselves every day if it's safe so caution is the word of the day the word of the season with these temperatures in flux like they are. So the three firefighters that went in the water, that fell through the ice, they are okay. They were wearing wetsuits. And the gentleman they were here to rescue again, he was hypothermic, but he is in stable condition. They're just working on getting his body core temperature back up. 
We're live here in Harrison Township. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Thankfully, everyone is okay and hope everyone else heeds the warning about that thin ice. Also here at noon, police in Roseville have arrested a woman in connection with a stabbing incident. Police who were called to a home on Utica Road north of 12 Mile found a man with nine stab wounds. And he told police that he was with a woman that he dated a few times after meeting her on the Internet. And when he voiced reluctance about making a commitment, he says that she stabbed him multiple times in the back and neck. He's 39. She's 29. She's in custody but has not yet been charged. The search for answers continues this afternoon after a man is shot and killed in Southfield. This is where the shooting happened at the Kingswood condominium complex near 12 mile in Evergreen. Police say that a 19 year old man was in his car when he was shot and killed here last night. A man who fled the scene and later returned is currently being questioned by police, although police say that nobody is in custody at this time. Over in Inkster, police are investigating a deadly hit and run there. Police say that a woman was hit and killed on Middle Belt Road near Michigan Avenue late last night. At this point, it's unclear what caused the crash. An investigation remains underway. Turn our attention now to politics. President-elect Donald Trump's escalating his words, his war of words, with the outgoing spy chief, CIA Director John Brennan, defending his agency on the Sunday morning talk show and taking issue with the way that Donald Trump has characterized the intelligence community. Hours later, Trump slammed Brennan on social media. Donald Trump slammed outgoing CIA director John Brennan on Twitter on Sunday night, writing in part, quote, oh, really? Couldn't do much worse. Just look at Syria, Crimea, Ukraine, and the buildup of Russian nukes. Not good. Was this the leaker of fake news? In response to the president-elect's tweets, the CIA told CNN late Sunday evening it had no comment. Trump reacting to comments, though, that Brennan made in an interview with Chris Wallace. I don't think he has a full an appreciation of Russian capabilities, Russians' intentions and actions that they are undertaking in many parts of the world. Brennan said the intelligence community was not out to get Trump. There is no interest in undermining the uh, president-elect and the national security team that's coming in. Trump has forcefully criticized intelligence agencies over what he says was unfair coverage caused by leaked information from intelligence officials. Trump compared them to Nazis, a statement Brennan took exception to. What I do find outrageous is uh, equating an intelligence community with Nazi Germany. I do take great umbrage at that. But Brennan insisted that the top priority is the safety of the American people. What I think Mr. Trump has to understand is that this is more than being about him. And it's about the United States and our national security. And Trump isn't just butting heads with the CIA. Just four days ahead of his inauguration, he's also butting heads with some of the country's most prominent African-American leaders, including Georgia Congressman John Lewis, who said that Trump was not a legitimate president and talked about racism still existing here in the United States. On one hand, we made a lot of progress. We've come distance. Uh, but we're not there yet. And I think when the president spoke a few days ago, he said we're not a post-racial society. And, and some people... Lewis, a widely admired leader of the civil rights movement, is one of 26 Democrats who have said that they are boycotting Trump's inauguration on Friday, including Michigan Congressman John Conyers. And you can watch the inauguration. It's right here on Local 4 on Friday. President-elect Donald Trump will be sworn in officially into office. Our Kimberly Gill will be there in Washington, D.C., providing live coverage of the inauguration starting on Friday. And even amidst all of the fighting, today is a day to remember a civil rights icon, Dr. Martin Luther King. President-elect Donald Trump sent out a tweet this morning honoring Dr. King, saying that we should celebrate MLK and all the wonderful things he stood for. Meantime, over in Miami, Congressman John Lewis was at the 24th annual Martin Luther King Scholarship Breakfast. Lewis was a keynote speaker at the annual event, which celebrates the life of Martin Luther King while awarding college scholarships to young people in the community. Around here in Metro Detroit, there are multiple events happening today as well to honor the life of Martin Luther King, including this one in Southfield. 32nd annual Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Peace Walk happened this morning. Take a look at the crowd. The event also featured the presentation of colors from Southfield Police, remarks from the head of the MLK Task Force, and 
presentations of several MLK service awards. And then here in Detroit, today was the grand opening of the William Banks Broadcast Museum and Media Center. The state of the art museum is dedicated to the historic events and achievements of the nation's first African-American owned and operated television station, WGPR TV 62. Something you definitely want to check out in the days to come. So to come here on Local 4 News at noon, a growing gap between the richest people in the world and the poorest people in the world, why some are demanding action. So you have your New Year's resolution, right? We've got your solution. Today at 4 on First at 4, we kick off an exciting new series. How about this? Get fit for good. Very easy to do. Whether or not you want to lose weight, gain muscle, or just get fit for good, you can do it from the comfort of your own living room by laptop. Today at 4 on First of 4, we walk you through the process and we get you involved to get fit for good. See you today at 4. Our Welcome back, everybody. We are following breaking news out of California this noon, where the wife of the Orlando nightclub shooter has been arrested and charged. According to reports, Nora Suleiman, she was arrested by the FBI today at her home in San Francisco and charged with obstruction and connection to the June 2016 shooting massacre at the Pulse nightclub there in Orlando that left 49 people dead. The gunman, Omar Mateen, was killed by police. It is a dreadful scene outside of the capital of a Central Asian country after a jumbo cargo jet crashed into a residential area. The 747 jet owned by a Turkish cargo company crashed as it approached the airport near the capital of Kyrgyzstan. As of now, the government reports 37 people are dead, including four plane crew members and at least five children on the ground. There was heavy fog in the area at the time of the crash, but the cause of the crash has not been determined at this time. We are also following a shooting in Mexico where four people were killed at an electronic music festival there. Police say that the lone gunman opened fire inside of the club early this morning. At this time, five people are confirmed dead with at least a dozen others being threatened or treated for injuries. The 10 day festival closed operations immediately as the search for the shooter continues. There is a new report that's been released to coincide with the opening of this year's DeVos Economic Forum in Switzerland. It shows a growing gap between the richest people in the world and the poorest people in the world. The group of charitable organizations known as Oxfam reports that just eight men own as much wealth as 3.6 billion people in the bottom economic half of the world's population. Last year, that equivalent wealth was owned by 62 people, Oxfam said says action is needed now. One thing Oxfam is calling on is for the world's billionaires to do the right thing and not the wrong thing. And what they could do is what Bill Gates has called on them to do, which is to pay their taxes. Many, many billionaires pay hardly any tax using tax havens to hide their money away. They should play by the rules like everybody else. The issue of income equality is on the agenda for the economic elite attending the DeVos Forum. And still to come here on your Monday afternoon, at least five people were killed due to icy conditions on roads where this wild, icy weather has been pummeling parts of the Midwest and Plain States. Paul? Rhonda, the eastern edge of that system is now starting to impact our weather. In fact, one of my Twitter followers just told me that roads are starting to get a little icy in South Lyon and things are going to get worse before they get better. I will break it all down for you right after the break. One size fits all sometimes works, but not necessarily in our cars. Safety is one of the most important factors in choosing a new car, and the unsung heroes of the safety world are the crash test dummies that sit in for us. We come up with very clear insights into you know, why injuries are occurring. Dr. Frank McGeorge discovers how two local institutions are changing the way they test safety in the cars we drive, tonight at 11. Welcome back, everybody. A winter storm has been tearing across the central U.S., leaving parts of at least 10 states with ice-covered conditions. And the bad news is you said that leading edge is headed our way. Yeah, this is not a good situation, Rhonda. This is really bad news. We talked about it on Friday that this is going to be a historic ice storm, and it was. This is just bad news. Thousands woke up this morning without power. At least five people killed due to the icy conditions on the roads. Power lines, roads we just talked about, cars all freezing. 
uh, just enormous rates uh, causing accidents all across the Midwest. And that storm is now, the eastern part of that storm is now affecting us. You can see that right here. The bulk of that moisture is to the west, but look at how far this extends all the way out into the Midwest. So we're going to be dealing with this for the next day or so, and we will talk with our local weather and talk about our local weather right now. Uh, let's get you out the door. We have temperatures that are right around freezing, a little below in some spots, most areas near to a little below freezing. Uh, Metro airports at 33 degrees. Notice the wind is very light, and that means that we don't have really any wind chill if you're heading out. So at least that's one piece of good news I have for you. So here's that eastern extent, and notice that what I just showed you, those bright colors back to the west, those real dark magentas and dark blues and dark greens. Here they're not quite as dark. This is light precipitation. We've had kind of spotty freezing drizzle, spotty freezing rain, kind of changing to snow, changing to sleet, back to freezing rain. So it's very light for a while, but this moisture is going to increase as we move toward the later afternoon hours. So things are going to get worse later in the afternoon into the evening hours. Let me explain real quick what's happening. This is actually really interesting. If you have below freezing air from the clouds all the way to the ground, well, you're going to get snow. But let's now take a wedge of warm air and bring that in. Well, if it's above freezing from the cloud to the ground, you're going to get all rain. But let's now say that it's above freezing in the cloud, but below freezing at the ground. Well, that rain falls, but it freezes at the ground. That's freezing rain. That's what we're going to be mostly dealing with this afternoon. But let's say now it's, it's raining from the cloud, but you have a larger area below freezing air. Those raindrops freeze in little balls. That's sleet. So if you hear that pinging against your windows, those are little balls of ice. And then if you have just a very narrow wedge of warm air, well, it's all snow. The snow just doesn't have time to melt. So you can see here on the computer model, we're going to move all the way into this evening and keep pockets of freezing rain around. But notice as we move through the night, it changes to rain. And then, just like last week, chances for some thunderstorms tomorrow morning as a warm sector comes through and then all of this stuff moves out and it's just a bad dream by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon. Ice amounts, this is new, new computer model in, and from earlier this morning, it has shifted the area of most ice a little bit north now. 696 to 96, northward to I-69, even a little above, a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice. Thank goodness the wind will be light tonight. That light wind means we're not going to be blowing around those ice-covered power lines and tree branches. So this afternoon, getting up to around 32 degrees, and keep in mind that the temperature is going to continue rising tonight. By tomorrow morning, mid-30s, well above freezing, so this stuff will have melted by tomorrow morning. The seven-day forecast starts with those thunderstorms tomorrow into the 40s. We keep the 40s all week long. Hey, we got the auto show. We have winter blast this weekend, and it's going to be in the 40s, Rhonda, all the way through next Sunday. All right, Paul, thank you. We'll be happy to get there. Still to come, one woman is combating intolerance in a creative way. Up next, the fun way that you can contribute to peace and unity in our country. Replay song. Welcome back, everybody. Before we go, we want to show you one woman in Arizona that is fighting hate and spreading the love. Tara Ijai is her name, and she thought there was too much hate in the world, so she came up with Love Glasses Revolution. That's what she calls it. Luckily, it's very simple. You spread love by wearing heart-shaped sunglasses. I decided that I'm going to look out and make a choice in every moment and, and see the good. And the glasses are already a big hit, selling for as little as $15 a piece. If you're interested, you can learn more under the lifestyle page of ClickOnDetroit.com. Maybe a nice Valentine's gift. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Paul wants to remind you to follow our app today so you can keep track of the weather and the changing conditions. Yeah, the radar is great. You can see all the different colors showing snow, rain, freezing rain, etc. Be careful out there, everybody. Yes. Have a good day.